Well, uh, Kevin, I think there are great opportunities. Uh, it's not only with respect to uh, employment and training opportunities on the ground uh, with labour hire, uh, but I think there's also opportunities for business engagement, so for Aboriginal enterprises and for them to be training up their own people uh, for those uh, uh, enterprises. Um, I think, I think South, South Australia in particular, as the next boom state, has, has a fantastic opportunities that they're going to roll out, both in the uh, minerals and the energy sectors here. Um, the Biashi Building Expansion Project is one of the major projects, uh, group of projects. Um, but Santos is doing work here, Aluka, um, and for Aboriginal people and enterprises, I think, you know, it f forms a fantastic opportunity for them to train up their own people, to equip their own people with those opportunities, both from the, from the grassroots kind of uh, trades, uh, machinery operators, uh, to, um, and I think also, in, from my experience, I'm um, in Aboriginal employment at the higher levels as well. So, you know, I've been involved in uh, cadetships with uh, young people going through engineering, and the technical sciences. So it's all that sort of mix of specialisations. Is, is there a regional and remoteness problem there, though? Because uh, a lot of the potential employees live in regional or remote Australia. Uh, you, by definition, can't have the training facilities at all of those places. So how does that work? Well, I think what can happen, Kevin, um, and what is happening in some parts, um, particularly in South Australia's north, is that there are organisations that are working closely with Aboriginal uh, groups. Um, some of these groups are, uh, some of these uh, demographic are low-risk low prisoners um, being trained up through the uh, protective services system and then being connected to uh, large contractors and that. Um, I think, in, and particularly where, where, where there are numeracy and literacy issues, Sometimes uh, Aboriginal people don't have the uh, necessary academic skill sets to be able to attach to learning, other learning environments. Um, so for instance, if a student um, comes from a household in regional South Australia, um, that household uh, is not, parents aren't educated, uh, possibly grandparents aren't educated, maybe educated in the cattle industry or... But that, that, that challenge, Jack, applies equally to Indigenous and non-Indigenous groups, correct. doesn't it? If, if Australia as a nation is going to have a skills shortage, then we need to address those issues right across the board where That's people right. have educational and deficiencies. That's exactly right. And there's a common disadvantage here, both black and white Australians. Uh, I think uh, we live in a society together and we you know, need to um, learn to live together and to work together and to learn together. And how we can do that? Well, there's some responsibilities. There's different uh, government governments at different levels have responsibilities to equip regions with these skill set series as well. Um, is is everyone on board for this? Um, I mean, with, for example, we we hear Twiggy Forest at uh, at Fortescue involved in programs. Uh, we hear occasionally from Santos and BHP, state governments, federal governments make announcements here and there. Is it all coordinated? Is everyone on board, or are there improvements that could be made in the system? I think I think there are definite improvements that can be made. Uh, what I hit, what I see in here in South Australia is that there are uh, there are some disconnects between the federal government and the state government, um, even though they're both Labor governments. There seems to me to be disconnects between agencies and uh, personalities within agencies, for whatever reason that is. But what that does, that hinders uh, very progressive programs, on the ground programs. Um, you know, those kinds of issues have to be ironed out. There has to be a common playing field where everybody involved, that includes the politicians, um, the policy makers, the programs people in the state government and the federal government, need to have a common linkage, you know, a common common goals they all aim for, not going in different directions because of personalities or different agendas, you know, I think that that's what hinders what can happen on the ground. So still more to be done? Oh yeah, I think so. Jack Pearson, thank you. Thank you, Kevin.